This video will walk you through using Adobe Photoshop to create over the shoulder graphics for Florida Focus. If you go to the Florida Focus YouTube channel, you can watch um, different newscasts and see a wide variety of OTS graphics. Um, the OTS is this graphic that's right over um, the anchor shoulder and they uh, brand the story. They help the audience kind of understand uh, what the story is about. Um, and it gives you an opportunity to showcase some skills to your future employers. Um, here are some examples of really good over the shoulder graphics. Uh, Nova made this one about um, a for a feature show about a parrot sanctuary. And I love um, the simplicity of this one. It's uh, really great to include texture when you can. So in this instance, there's different shades of, of green with the extreme close up of uh, parrot feathers that look really, really good here. Um, the text uh, has a type of a transparency um, edit that we'll go through in this video. Um, and it accurately represents the story and what the story is about. But this just looks really great. Um, it's very clean and, and a bit modern. Um, this next one here is really cool. This was a story about um, container uh, containers being used to create these shops. So a mall that's being built out of these containers. And so um, this was also created by students. I think a few students worked together on this graphic and they um, warped the text a little bit so that it would kind of lean up against these, um, these containers. Um, here are some examples from when I was working at WFLA. This is a great example of an OTS graphic that was um, clearly branding um, the Tampa Bay Lightning. They was the road to the cup. Um, here's a one from the election. So you can see everything from the colors, the font, um, the, um, the layout, the contrast um, usually has a lot to do with the story um, and kind of gives that same feel. You can also include icons and different types of backgrounds um, that will help convey the story uh, to your to your um, audience. Sometimes it can be really simple, like um, a person's face and um, and some text. The text doesn't have to be the same font for all of the words, but if you're going to use different font, whether it's a different color um, or a different uh, typeface, then you want to make sure that there's a specific reason um, and um, that you're using it intentionally. And if you are using two different fonts um, on the same graphic, they usually need to be very different so that it looks really in intentional um, and that it matches uh, the mood. Um, here's a full screen graphic, uh, just a very generic full screen graphic. So when we're talking about graphics, we're talking about a wide variety of things. This is an, a full screen graphic. Um, usually if you have a quote or a bullet point list, that's um, where you'd use that. Um, and here's a, a, a graphic that would be pushing to um, more coverage on WFLA.com, for example. Um, so let's get right to it. Um, I want to do a create a fake little OTS with you guys in Photoshop. Um, and uh, I want it to be about a story about a mask shortage. So um, the first thing we're going to do in Photoshop is um, open Photoshop and then hit create new on the left. Our OTS um, width and height are always going to be 1920 wide by 1080 tall. Um, and those are in pixels. So if, if yours is automatically set to inches or another um, measurement here, just make sure that that's set to pixels. 1920 wide by 1080 tall is 16 by nine. Um, and uh, 72 is, is fine for the resolution. That's pretty standard for anything digital. We're not printing this out. Um, it's going to be used in a digital form. So uh, these are the correct settings to be using here. Um, replace untitled one with the slug of your story. So in this instance, we're going to do a, a graphic for a mask shortage. Um, and so that's going to be the name of, um, of the um, of the story that we're working on. So what you could do is create different presets here as well, and, and I can go over that in another lecture. But for now, we're just gonna create one graphic. Um, I want you to save everything in the same spot, save everything so that later you might wanna come back and just tweak it a little bit, or after you submit it, I might say, oh, can you move the text around? So you always wanna have um, the file saved. I've created a box, or a folder rather, in my, um, finder here that's called mask mandate and that's where I'm going to set my OTS. I'm going to put all my content here for for this fake story that we're working on. 
Um, so the first thing I would do um, is go to Unsplash. That's my favorite source for stock um, photos. Unsplash um, has a lot of really high resolution photos. So let's go ahead and just type mask. Um, and because we might get a wide variety, I'll show you what we're gonna get. Um, so we'll get some of these masks, which is great, but we'll also likely get like these kind of masks, you know, like masks that aren't related at all. So you may want to specify that by adding another keyword like Corona um, virus um, to kind of help um, specify what you're actually looking for. Um, so we're, we're gonna look through here and what I'm looking for as I'm scrolling through is um, I'm looking for contrast because in this instance, like let's say I wanted to use this and I wanted to write text on top of it. It would be really difficult for me to put text on top of this because the contrast just wouldn't be um, good for, for that text. So like if you notice the text here, a lot, of, a lot of the time it's white. It doesn't need to be um, at all. So like if you remember, you know, what we were just looking at in this instance, the text was lighter, but the background was all basically the same type of contrast. So um, it made it a lot easier to read the text. Um, so let's keep looking for something that that might work. I mean, we could use we could use really a lot of these. Um, I found one earlier that I really liked. So I'm going to try to find uh, that one again. A lot of these could work. Um, but I'm also looking for something that is that is horizontal. It doesn't need to be because a lot of times these are really high resolution, so you can re um, kind of crop them and it'll still maintain an HD look. Um, but in this instance, I'm going to um, try to go with one. I mean, you could use even illustrations and stuff like this would be really cool. Um, there's really a lot of different ones that you could use. So. Um, I'm going to, I already downloaded one, so I'm going to go with that one, but like, let's pretend that you wanted to use this one. You would just click on it and, um, they're all of these are, are, um, are free for us to use. And there's some information here in case you need to clarify, like sometimes there's location. You want to make sure that it's not like the wrong country or something. If you're trying to find a picture of a specific location, but in this instance, this would work. Um, and so then you could just hit download free and it would go into your downloads folder. Um, I actually found a different one earlier that I want to use for this one, and um, it's this image right here. Um, I like this image a lot. I think that um, this would be a cool place to add the, task, uh, the text. So after I download, I'm going to click and just drag it into my folder because you don't want to edit out of your downloads in Photoshop or really any Adobe software. You always want to move your files from the downloads into a folder so that you can access them later in case you delete your um, all of your downloads, which after a while <laughs> they will get really big and, and bulky and you'll just want to delete them to clean up your computer. So I'm back here now. Um, there's a couple ways you could do this. You could just like drag and drop it um, or um, you can hit file open um, and then you'd have to locate that folder that you just created I encourage that you have um, a folder that's just for our class and that each story you work on gets another um, another folder and that you use the same slug that you would be using when you pitch the story or when you write the script. That way it's easy to find um, later on. So what just happened is that this opened in a new little tab. So this is what we were working on. This is the aspect ratio that we need. It's 1920 by 1080. If you look at this, this is more square. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mouse down in the bottom right where it says background. I'm going to click and hold and just move it here and just drop it. Whoops. I actually moved that. I've never done that before. There we go. <laughs> so I'm going to try that again. Click and hold and just hover above that tab. And then um, if you do it this way, if you drop it here, then it, it won't show up. So you kind of have to drop it hover it here, don't let go, and then kind of move down and drop it this way. So drop it here or anywhere on the on kind of the bin equivalent. Um, so you'll notice that this is very a very, very large file. So if you like open um, get info about it, you'll see um, that it's just massive. So it's six six more than six thousand by four thousand. Uh, which is great. It's, it means it's a really high resolution, but we're doing 1920 by 1080. 
So um, it'll show up as like really, really large. So there's several ways to make this smaller. If you click this um, move tool, you can just like move it kind of an easy way is just to kind of grab the edges there and kind of shrink it down. Um, with most every Adobe software, there's like a million ways to do it, but I think this is kind of a user-friendly way to approach it. Um, and then kind of just keep making it the size that you want it to make or want it to be. And you can move it up and down like this. So um, this is going to say mask shortage on it. So you usually don't want too much text um, on, on the screen. And if you can, it's, it's, um, you could either center it like this, like this would be an example of it, like basically centered, um, which is okay, or you can off center it. And that would mean that it should be on kind of one of the, one of those rules of third on the side. So usually off centered will work really well, um, because it creates some negative space. And it is helpful to know which side the anchor is going to be standing on um, so that you don't crowd one side. But let's pretend my anchor is going to be on the left side here um, and it's going to they're going to have the over the shoulder over, um, you know, their left shoulder. I may want to off center this a bit and um, and create some negative space here, perhaps. But you can experiment with it. A lot of it's like just experimenting and kind of seeing what feels right. Um, and I'll often ask like, can you move it around or whatever until it kind of feels better. So let's say this is what we want it to, to look like. Um, you can actually yours might be if you adjust it up here, you could click yours might actually be up here automatically. I've kind of moved my windows around a little bit and you can do the same thing too when you're editing. Um, if you click anywhere here, then you'll notice that it deselects. You can always go select and deselect as well. Um, so now I have the image basically where I want it to be and I'm going to add the words mask shortage and I think I want it to be the word mask on top and the word shortage on bottom. I'm going to take um, my mouse and hover above this T, the horizontal type tool. I'm going to click that once and I'm going to create um, kind of a rectangle that's about the size of the mask. Um, my font is like really large. You can see the font size up here is like 673. So I'm going to need to definitely make that smaller. I can hover above the T, click on it and drag to the left if I wanted to do that. Or I can do a drop down um, or I can double click here and just type in a number. So there's always like a million ways to do the same thing. This is default font that's going to be in here just um, as an example, but we already know what the text is going to be. So let's um, let's replace that with uh, mask and then hit enter short shortage let's see oh there it is shortage so I'm happy that happened now because sometimes you'll see that there's a really really large space or they may be overlapping a bit and so we're going to adjust um, the text over here on the top right in properties you can um, make this a larger um, window or you can also scroll up and down. So what I'm looking for is this icon that has the A's on top of um, each other and that's going to adjust the letting. So I can click on it, hold and drag to the right and increase the size or drag it to the left and decrease the size between the words. Um, and so that's all I really want to do. I kind of like this font. I have it on our Florida Focus default font. Uh, which is the Babis font. Um, so I like this font for, for Florida Focus. Um, you can see we can change the fonts if we want to. Um, and I encourage you to experiment with fonts. However, if you're in a rush and you don't have time to find like the font that really, really looks good, it's best just to stick with like the one that we're gonna use for the class, unless you find something that's like a really good decorative font or something that, that has a reason for looking that way. So if, if you're doing a story on graffiti and you find some really cool font that's like this awesome decorative thing that like matches the style of the story, then just go for it. But, um, you know, be prepared. This is a collaborative process, so be prepared to get some feedback and I may ask you to change it and we'll just play around with, with it a little bit. 
So let's um, let's keep this font. I also like that it's white. Um, so if I if I deselect, you'll see that the font is white. Um, but if I double click on it, it'll highlight that. I could change the font color if I wanted to, but in this instance, I like that it's white. So I'm just going to hit cancel. Um, the next thing that I don't need to do because I, I kind of like the distance between the letters themselves. You can adjust that as well if you wanted to make the letters like really far apart. And if you notice that then the, the, wrap, the text starts wrapping here, you would just want to expand the original box that you created like this. Um, I'm just going to hit Command Z though because I, I kind of liked where we were at. Oops, okay, well, let me undo it. Let's just move it back together. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is try to like line this up on the mask. So if I finish up with this side, I click over here and if I do this, it says it could not use the move tool because layer, no layers are uh, selected. This is a common thing that new people who have never used Photoshop are like, I don't know what to do. It's okay, all you need to do is click on your text here. So this, if you click on it, you'll see now I can move it around. Um, the text is visible because it's on top of this layer, which is the photo that I, we put in there. If I were to move the photo on top of the, te the text, the text goes away, but it's really just underneath it. So right now we're only working with two layers, but eventually when you start adding more layers, it's important for you to understand that you can just drag and drop it above or below um, if you need to adjust um, the layers. So the next thing I wanna do is, I don't really like that um, the text isn't parallel with the edge of the mask. I could rotate this background image by clicking on layer two. I could hover my mouse on the corner and I could, oops, I could like do this if I wanted to. Um, but I like that it's kind of crooked. I think it looks kind of cool and it gives me an opportunity to play with my text a little bit. So I'm gonna click the text and then I'm just gonna hover my mouse around the outside and um, kind of just drag it. Sometimes it can be hard to do this unless you have like a line. So, but I'm looking at this little dotted line here and it, and it seems to be more or less uh, pretty even with the line. Um, and if you try to adjust things and it's just like not perfect for you, you can zoom in. So um, if I were to just pinch my keyboard and zoom in, I can have a little bit more control over exactly where this is. I would be able to also move um, this down to this line, if that's the line, and now you kind of see, oh, the E is a little bit higher than the S, um, and if you want to be really particular about it, you could then try to like adjust just slightly and then we can see if that's a little bit better. That's a little bit better. Okay, cool. And then I'm just gonna zoom out and then keep um, keep working. I'm also gonna move this up a little bit because I want it to be kind of in the middle. Um, and I kind of like, like that. I don't, I feel it's a little crowded, like that the S and the E are a little too close to these sides. So I think I'm going to make the font a little bit smaller, just like a little. And then um, when I did that, the space between the words just became a little bit too big. So I'm going to double click to highlight and I'm going to go back over here to my um, properties. I'm going to scroll down and I'm just going to reduce the space between the text a little bit. So the larger the text is, um, the more space you need or the more letting you need. Um, which is the space between the words or the, the lines. Okay, so let's say like this isn't bad. Um, let's say we are happy with it, like kind of like that. Let's zoom out, mask shortage. So this could be an over the shoulder graphic and it's actually fine, just like this. This would be totally fine. Um, the words are legible, like you could read them, but sometimes you may have to add a drop shadow. Um, so. The way to do that is to take your mouse over um, on that layer, that's the text layer, and um, you can double click kind of in this empty space here, and then you get a lot of layering styles. So I'm gonna hit drop shadow, but something that's really important that people will miss 
is that people think by hitting the word drop shadow that now these um, settings and, and these sliding scales and stuff are are working on the drop shadow, but they're not. You actually, you can see the word blended options is kind of highlighted a little bit in light gray. You wanna click on this line now that drop shadow is highlighted. You see you have some other options here. And this is just a bit too dramatic. It might work, you know, for the, for the look if that's what you're going for, but I kind of wanted something a little more subtle. So I'm gonna change the opacity here. So you notice as I'm moving this to the left, it reduces it, um, or I can make move to the right, make it really thick. I can also make it spread a lot less, which I tend to, to prefer. Um, and then I could make the size a little bit smaller. Um, so you can just kind of tweak these. Usually distance is gonna be weird unless you're doing it on purpose, like to make it look like a shadow. Like this could be kind of cool. And if that is the case, if you're trying to make it look like a shadow, like perhaps um, on a hallway floor or on a wall or something, um, then it's important for you to know that you can adjust the angle. So you can take this little um, line, it's like a clock, and it, and it will move the shadow kind of like if the sun were hitting the letters and they were casting a shadow behind them for this specific graphic i don't want to do that i don't really need to have a big distance between the shadow and the words so i'm going to reduce that here um, like a lot i'm going to just barely barely have any kind of drop shadow so it's this is a very minimal drop shadow i'm going to hit okay and then i'm just going to zoom out a little bit um and if I wanted to see, okay, was it really better? Was it better before? I can, next to the effects thing, you see there's like a little eyeball. You could click the eyeball and do before, after. Do I, do I like it with with or without? Um, honestly, I could go either way. Uh, I don't know that the one is really that much better. We can argue about it if you want to, but in this instance, I don't really care. I think they're both legible. They're both good. Maybe I'll do drop shadow just to make sure everyone can read it, but I think it's good like this. So this is my OTS, that's it. And now I'm gonna um, export it, file, export. You could do a quick export as a PNG, that's super easy. Um, we could use PNGs or JPEGs. Both of those are acceptable file formats. Um, you could either quick export as a PNG, which is technically higher resolution than JPEG. Um, so let's do that. And you wanna always make sure that you're saving things where you need them to be saved because that's a common thing that students will say, I saved it and I don't know where it went. Um, so let's go to my mask mandate and I'm gonna name this mask mandate OTS because you might end up doing a VO and you might end up doing a SOT or you might end up doing a package. And so you'll have all of these things named mask mandate and it's gonna be helpful when you have um, the story form or whatever you're using it for. Uh, so this is how you create an over the shoulder graphic. Then you would go to the box folder and you would um, upload it into your media. So let's say we're working on this story. To, this is the day that we're working. Uh, these are just some tests that we did earlier. I'm gonna create a folder and it's going to have everything, all of my elements for the story. So a uh, mask shortage was the story. And perhaps I'm also gonna be working on videos and full screens and all sorts of content. So for me, it'll be nice to have everything just like in this one place for now. Um, and then we can work on moving things around into different folders later, but you can just drag and drop it. Um, and this way it'll be really easy if you wanna say, hey, can you check out my OTS? I just uploaded it to the box. I can go in the box or uh, you can send me a URL. So like, let's say all of these really work. <laughs> you can click this button. The link is created as shared. Um, you would just copy it and send it and say, hey, can you take a look at this? Um, or you can, I could just look at it this way, or you can take a picture, text it to me, however you want to do that. But here's an OTS graphic. Um, let's do, um, for fun, a couple other things to show you these techniques. So let's use, um, we can use the same, the same one, but I want to make the font um, kind of like a little see-through. So let's open this back up. 
Uh, I don't know that I need the drop shadow for now because I want to make sure you guys can see you know, what we're doing. Let me actually move this over and make it bigger so it's clear like what's being done to the text. And let's double click on the right, open it up, and then there's like a lot of different options here. If you notice when I hover above these, the text kind of changes a little bit. Um, and there's a lot of different things that you could could do. This you could also adjust, um, and this you could also adjust. So let's see if there's one that looks good with this. Like this is the overlay, which is um, I think what we ended up using for that parrot um, once. So you can kind of see through the text. Um, this it doesn't look horrible for this. OTS, but it really doesn't work like there's really no reason. I mean, I guess this could work. I really liked the way that it looked on the parrots, um, but if I were to move the text like off of the mask and maybe on this side, you can kind of see the effect a little bit better. So if, um, if I didn't have this one awesome mask right there in the shot and I wanted to like only use like this part or something then maybe that would be an instance where that would make a little bit more sense um, and I could just make it bigger and adjust the font this way and then adjust the lighting And now it doesn't super make sense why the font is like not straight. <laughs> so you may want to end up straightening it back out. Um, this one kind of makes it difficult to read. And so if we were to do that, perhaps I would also add a drop shadow to it, uh, which gives it another kind of look. I still really like the other one better, but I just wanted to give you an example of how this one was done. Um, so there's lots of other stuff like that that you could use. Um, to, to manipulate the text. So hopefully this is a good start. Um, I want you to keep kind of experimenting with these things and, uh, and play around with it. The main thing to keep in mind is that it has to be something that people can, can clearly read, but that they don't have to spend a ton of time reading it. So usually for the over the shoulder graphics, you don't want to spend um, you know, more than three words really at the at max, you don't want your audience to stop listening to your anchor. It should be supplementing the story. It shouldn't kind of take over. So you only want a couple of words there to help brand the story or to help kind of communicate what the story is about. So um, keep playing around with this. Let me know if you have any questions and I look forward to seeing the OTSs that you create.